perhaps the psalmist had this assurance because he believed that God would forgive him and cleanse him. The Apostle John said, if you confess your sin, God is faithful and he is just to forgive and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, no matter what it is. Come to Father. Come to your Father. Go to your Father. Don't stay where you are. There is no sin apart from the sin of unbelieving that is too much, too great for God to forgive us and to cleanse us from. Perhaps maybe what we need is a cleansing from the Lord. It's a spring cleaning we need from Him. Come to Him this morning in faith. Bring all your burdens and all your sin to the altar and leave them there. He will forgive. He will clean, clean you from all of it and set you free. Perhaps this is where you are at and you need that special touch from the Lord of His cleansing, of His forgiveness and of His mercy. The psalmist decided to sing unto the Lord because he was confident that God would deal bountiful, bountifully and graciously with him. Look at verse 6. I will sing to the Lord for he has been good to me. Yes. Yes. In spite of the way you may feel this morning, in spite of the way you may have been feeling for the past months and the past days or even a few years, in spite of all the illness, in spite of all the pain, in spite of all these uncertainties and securities that we face in this world, God, God, has graciously been faithful and good to us. The psalmist said in Psalm 23 and verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Even in, your, in our pains, God's goodness is following us and coming after us and blessing us. God will be good to you today. He will be good to you tomorrow. He will be good to you in the future. He has been good. He has done great things in our life. Oh, there are times to overcome depression. You and I need to count our blessings. Count your blessings and name them one by one. There is no remedy greater then a heart of gratefulness and a heart full of praise before God in the dark days, in the days of depression. Depression is one form of another, and one form or another will be the experience of all of us somewhere along the road of life. Depression must be dealt with or one will live a life of misery. God has come. He has sent His Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to this world to give us this abundant life. God does not want you to live the rest of your life in misery. He wants to take care of this depressing mood and depressing uh, curse that is in your life. Bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. Declare your need to Him and pick up the provision that He has made for you, just like David did. 
take up his goodness and his mercy and to fill your hearts with gratitude that he has he has been so good to you and not only to us but to the people around us as well God is good God is good he loves us he worked for good and everything that life brings to us just as Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 tell us that everything work out for the, for good to those who love the Lord God is working this very moment you are going through this very pain you are going through this darkness you are going through this depression that you are experiencing God will work it out for your good he has his purpose in it if our depression is due to discipline of our heavenly father let us rejoice rather than give way to discouragement a father the holy book tell us discipline the children he loves if you are experiencing the heaviness of God's hand because of some sin or some things that have happened to you in your life rejoice rejoice because the father disciplined the children he loves you know that he loves you because you are feeling that heaviness in your heart let us look let us look up because something good is going to happen in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5 and 13 I would like to close with that this morning if you can turn with me to the book of Hebrews to the book of Hebrews we would be in chapter 12 Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5 to verse 13 and as we read these from God's word this morning together let us let us seriously turn all of these burdens to the Lord and leave them there Hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 5 and you have forgotten that word of encouragement that address you as sons my son do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebuke you because the Lord discipline those he loves and he punishes everyone he accept as son endure hardship as discipline God is treating you as sons for what son is not disciplined by his father if you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline then you are illegitimate children and not true sons moreover we have all had human fathers that at some time or the other who have disciplined us and we respected them for it how much more should we submit to the father of our spirit and leave our fathers discipline us for a little while as they thought best but God discipline us for our good that we may share his holiness no discipline seemed pleasant at the time but painful later on however it produces a harvest a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it therefore strengthen your feeble arms and weakness make level paths for your feet so that the name and the lame may not be dis disabled but rather be healed the word 
of the Lord to us this morning. Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word to us. Your word is truth, O Lord. We thank you that in your mercy you have made provision for us for the things that we go through in life. And there are those of us this morning, O oh Lord, that are feeling down. We have lost our loved ones. We are not getting along one with the other. We are not where we would have loved to be this morning, spiritually and materially. We thank you that you promised to be with us even in those dark days and those down days. And there are those who are suffering pain, a lot of pain. Nothing seems to help. We pray for them this morning, O oh Lord, that they will have a special touch from you. Now may the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you as you go out and leave and serve in our homes, in the school, in the business, in our workplace, and throughout our community. May the love of God be lived through us, now and forevermore. Amen.